This is my first time trying to use this camera. Let's see how it goes. It's been exactly one year since I closed my Redbubble shop and I've been getting so many questions about Redbubble Sense because I have tutorials on Redbubble still on this channel and because, you know, a lot of you are still on Redbubble and that's okay. Just because I closed my store doesn't mean that I'm not keeping up to date with things that are happening and it doesn't mean that there aren't any useful tutorials or useful information in this channel, which is why I'm making this video filled with so many questions that you guys have asked me. I narrowed them down, bunched them together in groups and will provide answers for questions like uploading from a third world country, how can we make money with prices being so high, people are getting banned for no reason, as well as the limit for the uploading, using bots to upload faster, and a bunch of other topics. And with that said, let's just get started. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mayo and I teach creative people how to sell their art online. And today I'm doing a Redbubble frequently asked questions video with all of the questions that you guys have been sending me. Now I tried bunching these questions into several groups, whether we're talking about people asking about the pricing on Redbubble, the uploading process, new rules that they have, what can get you banned, as well as people asking me questions about my own Redbubble journey and questions about marketing. So let's stop chit-chatting and just get to the questions. I sort of wrote all of them here and again these are questions that you guys sent me but there were so many questions that were similar so I just made them into one. Let's start with protocols, banning and third world countries and uploading limits. I got banned from Redbubble because I live in Thailand. How can anyone from a non-English speaking country join Redbubble? So I just want to say this. First of all, so many people ask me this question, they're from India, they're from Sri Lanka, they're from multiple places. And I do have to tell you, I'm from Israel. I opened my Redbubble store when I was in Israel. I was operating it while I was in Thailand, while I was in Romania, in Bulgaria, and Greece. In fact, to this day, I have never opened my Redbubble account while being in an English-speaking country. So I don't think Redbubble is banning people from third world countries. I do believe that a lot of people are getting banned for doing something they didn't know was a violation of the rules. I got suspended once for uploading with a robot. My bad, I opened a new shop and got suspended after two weeks without doing anything wrong. No copyright, what can I do? I'm gonna divide my answer into two. The first one is you did nothing wrong and the second one is what can you do? So the first one is you did do something wrong. And I'm not talking about using an uploading robot and getting suspended. I'm talking about the fact that after you got suspended, you opened another store, which is a violation of Redbubble terms and cause for termination. And the second is, what can you do? Nothing. You can acknowledge the fact, and we can all acknowledge the fact, that we don't own our shops on Redbubble, not also on Etsy, on Society6, on Zazzle, on TeePublic, and they don't owe us anything. If you violate the rules, they can ban you, and that's it. What can you do? Open a shop on a different platform and do not copyright, do not tag spam, and do not use bots for uploading to prevent being flagged again. Next, I'm thinking of using an uploading software to Redbubble. I heard you saying in an old video, it's a bad idea. Why? And if it's not good, why do so many YouTubers recommend them? Okay, so the reason why I always tell people to not do this is exactly what we heard now. People get banned from this. In fact, it's on Redbubble's terms of service that you're not allowed to use any tool for uploading other than, you know, yourself and your computer. You're not allowed to use any bots for uploading. It's in the terms and cause for termination. The reasons why so many YouTubers uh, like recommend them, affiliate links, I mean, they get money to recommend them. I'm not saying that affiliate marketing is a bad thing. I love affiliate marketing and I do affiliate marketing even on this channel with links to Kittle, to Canva Pro, to Placeit, to Hostinger, a service for web hosting and domain. And I even get often discounts for viewers of this channel, like with Copy AI, where you have 40%. And I promote all of these tools because I like them and I use them. What other people choose to do is beyond the scope of my, I don't know, control or abilities and whether they know that people can get banned or not, it's their choice to affiliate this. So I think that you should take everything you hear online with a grain of salt and remember that people sometimes just have a different motivation than what you thought of. Sometimes, you know, on this side of the camera, I don't believe that any YouTuber wakes up in the morning and works so hard on YouTube without it being a money-making business. And it's not bad to make money, but yeah, I do not like people recommending these bots all the time. It can get you banned. I read that Redbubble changed their uploading limit. Why do you think they did that? Well, let me tell you my opinion, as if that matters. <laughs> but Redbubble started as a place for artists to upload their art onto Redbubble. So let's say I'm an artist and I've done I don't know, 50 illustrations in the last months 
like few months to do it while I have a full-time job and I have only one day to dedicate to my Redbubble shop that I can upload and upload and upload and I think that's why they put a limit of 60 in case people do like one day every few months. But if you look at what's been happening in the last few, I don't know, two, three years uh, since the health crisis started, everybody's just uploading and uploading and uploading and uploading and massively uploading again with the robots and just uploading things that are not actually art or not actually what Redbubble wanted to have on their platform. Everybody's designing based on keywords for the same thing and I feel like that's their way of trying to stop it with 30 upload limit per day. I am all for it by the way. I don't upload as much. Well, I, I don't have a Redbubble store now but when I did I wasn't uploading as much at all. Even if I look at my Zazzle store or Society6, like Zazzle, I upload I think 10 products a day and that's a lot of work because you know I upload these products and then you know I'm starting to think about creating Pinterest pins for them or like marketing them it's not like I have all my day just to upload 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 I'm doing actually my own marketing next up how are we supposed to succeed on Redbubble when prices are so high um, high in comparison to what I think I mentioned it when I was talking like at the beginning of this channel about the fact that I never sold a t-shirt on Redbubble because for years I didn't even have t-shirts activated because I was looking at this and I was like, why would I buy a t-shirt for that amount of money that I can't even try on first when I can just go to the store in Israel or to a market and get a t-shirt, like a nice one with a nice design for like $4. <laughs> I thought that these prices were ridiculous, but when I was looking at like the shower curtains and the bed sheets, I was like, wow, this is like, first of all, something that I don't need to try on. And these are things that I buy once and they really set the mood of the room. And I think maybe me as a person prefer to spend the majority of my money, like to, to be more exclusive when I'm talking about my home decor and home design rather than the t-shirt I'm wearing because in that case, I would prefer comfort and I would prefer to try it on first. And I think we're just different people. I mean, why would anyone buy anything online? I think that, you know, if you are one of those people who really like home decor and you found an artist that you like, yeah, you're going to buy a wall art from them. You're going to buy like a print or a poster. Or if you really want to create a certain vibe or theme to your bedroom or to your bathroom or to your living room, you're going to invest money in finding just the right color palettes, which is something that people can't find on regular stores at all. Like you'll have like a limited amount of colors and that's it. You won't have any unique patterns or a very specific colors. And you can see that this works based on Society6 when they launch their essentials part where they basically themselves, the platform, sell one color items in pastels because some people just need that specific color palette and they're willing to pay money for it. As for how you're supposed to succeed, make good art, make something that stands out and market it. Because a lot of times I'm not going to think to myself, I want to buy a poster and I will, you know, search for a specific poster in specific stores and look at the price. Sometimes I will see something on Instagram or on TikTok or on YouTube or on Facebook or on Pinterest and I'll be like, I want that. And the initial feeling of I want that might succeed how much it costs. And also, again, different people from different countries, from different levels of income can afford different things. Are stickers really the best thing to sell on Redbubble? How do people make money from such low commission? Let's start with that. First of all, the commission is on your control, like you can control the commission. And second, some of the stickers are huge, like you can make a lot of money from this. Third, some people buy a lot. I think I spoke about it, and again, the video I made about things that I am selling on Redbubble after not selling t-shirts. I was selling like my thank you sticker set, like people would buy like 30, <laughs> you know? So people buy in a bunch and if I make a dollar commission for each, then that's a $30 commission for designing a thank you sticker. And I think that's kind of cool. We're also talking about, you know, the fact that stickers are being sold a lot more because the price is so low and because Redbubble has a discount for purchasing multiple stickers at a time. So do I think that stickers are the best product? Yes and no. I mean, I sold stickers. I love stickers. I'm a huge, like, buyer of stickers, but I don't think they're the best product. I think the best product is a product that you know how to design and sell. I mean, I sold so many stickers, but I also sold so many A-line dresses. I don't think a lot of people do that on Redbubble, but, you know, marketing and passion for something and, you know, maybe some luck even. How do people manage to upload so much? I have a full-time job and I can't manage more than five uploads a day. I don't know how people do it, a lot of people use these bots, which I really don't recommend. And a lot of people just sit down and upload because their uploading process is different. And this is something that when I started Redbubble, 
and I saw that there are so many different products, I would upload a very specific design file like for each group of products. And you can see this in my past videos because I would pattern things and I would fit them into mugs and stuff like that. So for every design that I uploaded to Redbubble, I actually had like, what, eight or seven different designs. So my uploading process to me was normal. I think the first time that I showed it, people were like, are you insane? If I upload products like this, I'm never going to be able to upload so much. So I don't know your five products a day. Maybe it's because you're investing and you're taking the time and actually making a good design and you're actually trying to fit it to all of the products, which is amazing to me. Maybe for you, five is even a lot. I think like a lot of people go into this volume, volume, volume. I started adding volume to my Redbubble store when I started this channel because I was doing tutorials and I was uploading. But I wasn't marketing the things that I was uploading. I already had my marketing set up for the previous items and I was making consistent sales on Redbubble on a daily basis from an account that had 20 designs. That's it. So if you're uploading five a day, that's amazing. By the way, if you are uploading five a day on a certain niche and you market it and you like that niche, maybe upload three to Redbubble a day and two to TeePublic, like expand, not even just do Redbubble, but you shouldn't feel bad about uploading five per day. Moving on to the part of you asking me questions about my Redbubble store, <laughs> will there be more Redbubble design tutorials on the channel? No, but also yes. No, because I'm not going to make a Redbubble design tutorial. I don't have a Redbubble seller's account. I'm not connected to Redbubble. I can't upload because I chose to leave Redbubble. By the way, if you want to know why I left Redbubble, I will leave a link to that video down below. It's for a lot of different reasons. The thing is that while I will not be making Redbubble design tutorials, I am making other design tutorials that fit people who sell on Redbubble. Like my t-shirt design tutorials when I'm doing it for TeePublic will fit Redbubble. A lot of the things that I'm designing for Zazzle would fit Redbubble. A lot of the things that I'm designing for Society Six, a lot of these tools would fit Redbubble. A lot of my marketing tips, because this channel is going to head more into marketing specifics, can be used for Redbubble. So even if you see a video, and I'm not just talking about my channel, I'm talking about all channels. If you want to get really creative about your Redbubble store with patterns, maybe look for a tutorial on YouTube on someone designing patterns for Spoonflower or for Society6. I mean, these websites are huge with selling patterns and not all people are making Redbubble pattern tutorials. It's just about learning the practice of how to upload and the process of how to upload, but then the design is entirely your own. You can still get ideas from people who make t-shirt tutorials for Printful and upload them to Redbubble or any other platform and marketing, which is the most important thing. And there will be more marketing tutorials. I'm so on it, so on it. I just need to find my, my golden spot in filming in this house with so much echo and this camera, which I keep looking if it's turning off or not. <laughs> anyway, next up. Have you thought about getting back to Redbubble? Yes, just for the sake of you guys, like just for the sake of these tutorials, because again, a lot of things are happening on Redbubble and I don't get notifications on them from you know Redbubble because I'm not a seller. And I know that if I was a seller, I would have gotten notifications about these things. So I have thought about it. I haven't done it yet. If I do, I will update you guys, of course. In one of your videos, you mentioned that you used to market your shop differently. How? Well, I actually made, I think, a full video on my marketing story with Redbubble, which was a very personal video. I actually started uploading to Society6, I think it was almost a year before I discovered Redbubble. And I discovered Redbubble when I was working on a baby blog and I was looking at things to affiliate, like to send traffic to or to recommend. And then I realized I can just design my own baby products. I started on Redbubble with baby products and then I discovered I can't have kids. So I completely like, I didn't even wanna wanna deal with it. And it, it still had the name Dinksy, which was the name of my baby blog. I closed the baby blog. And then I just went on to Redbubble and I think I just uploaded some Mahjong designs because I thought they were pretty cool and I was really into Mahjong. And I remember there was this Facebook group where someone was asking about unique designs from Thailand because I was in a group of Thailand and merch from Thailand. And I said that it's not from Thailand, but I have really cool like dresses from Mahjong on Redbubble. And they really liked it. It was someone that had a boutique, I think in Vegas and in Boston, I think. I'm not really sure. It was like a long time ago, but they had a boutique and they were literally buying my dresses for, and, and this, you know, this will come to show you about the price because they were buying my Redbubble dresses for $60 a piece and selling them for 200. So those people, that person, and I think also a friend of his or a business colleague, I think like almost every single month went into Redbubble and just ordered more and more dresses and multiple sizes. And 
they even asked me, can you make this with a black background? Can you make this with a red background? Can you make this with a blue background? So I did. The second success of my Redbubble store about the marketing differently was that I encountered in an Etsy sellers group someone asking where can they buy thank you stickers to put on the <laughs> on the actual box. So I went into Redbubble and I designed a sticker that is actually four stickers with a transparent background that says thank you in four different styles and put the link there. I think I had so many Etsy sellers just buy it from this and Another blog that I had, which is a shopping magazine, which was updated regularly, had over 2,000 posts before the hack to GoDaddy. Thank you, GoDaddy, for your terrible security, losing my life's work. But I was working on that website, I think, for about five years, and I had on the sidebar of each and every one of those 2,000 posts a link to my penguin socks and also to one of my mugs, and thus started the thing with the algorithm of Redbubble, it sees that a product is selling, so it's starting to recommend it to other people. So I noticed that I'm also selling uh, Mahjong stickers and Mahjong socks and Penguin stickers and, and, and thank you mugs. It's like all of my designs and all of the products they were selling on started trending inside Redbubble itself. That's the story of my marketing. Very briefly, I have other marketing tactics these days. More videos on that, including my basically plan for my new Zazzle store will be in the next few days, weeks. And again, if I'm marketing my Zazzle store with a blog, you can do that with your Redbubble store. Just don't mind the fact that this tutorial is for a different print on a man company. Open your mind and get information for free wherever you can get it from. By the way, if at any point you like this video or found this content useful, please hit the like button down below because every time you do that, YouTube thinks, oh, this is a cool video. I'm going to show it to more people and subscribe to my channel if you are not yet subscribed. Do you think there was anything you could have done to sell better on Redbubble and not to have to close your store? Yes and no. One, there are so many more things I could have done. I could have designed more designs on my niche. I could have started marketing the other niches that I was uploading for. I could have done more marketing because I kind of had my passive marketing based on, you know, the sidebar of that blog and not just directly using Pinterest like full time. But my success on Redbubble has nothing to do with me closing my store because to be honest, that was my biggest money ticket at that time that was the print on demand like platform that was making me the most amount of money that I closed it was purely from personal reasons whether it's ethics or you know a long list of things that again I made a full video about last year when I started my Redbubble shop I didn't know anything about SEO or tags now that I learned I went back and changed tags and names for all my designs and they are still not selling why is that one amazing amazing that you said to yourself, I'm going to learn SEO, I'm going to learn tags, and I'm going to actually go to 400 designs and change them. But, two, maybe they're not selling because they're not good. And I'm not saying you're a bad designer, because there is a huge difference between being a good illustrator and designer and being a good product designer. Maybe the products are not good, they're not correctly placed. A lot of people put t-shirt designs like really low, like starting from here, which makes no sense. A lot of people also don't market, so maybe marketing is the issue. Just fighting off tags and SEO is not enough. Also, maybe Redbubble kind of gave up on those listings and you should make new ones. There are so many reasons why people might not be selling. I need an updated version of the video of why I'm not selling. But changing SEO is amazing. Like, thank yourself that you did that but it's not enough to change. I don't understand how to market from a blog. Making a post about each product seems to take too long. Yeah, that seems to be exhausting. If I wanted to focus on a product, I would probably make like a blog that has like a gallery photos, like just gallery photos and people click and go directly to Redbubble. But marketing from a blog, the way I see it, can go in uh, three ways. The first, you're marketing about the products that you're selling. For example, you are in the niche of people who like dogs, so you make a blog post uh, 10 perfect gifts for dog mothers and then in them you detail the types of gifts and give links to these products on your Redbubble store. That could be a t-shirt, that could be a mug, all of them, like a list of 10 of them. The second is talking about a niche and then giving a link and this is something that I'm starting to do with my Zazzle store, with my blog for Zazzle. So for example, I will make a video about how to create a more unique look to your bathroom on a budget. And under it, there will be links and photos of very specific and 
specifically chosen items. This could also be, for example, how to add a personal touch to your kid's bathroom. And then I will literally say like, you know, kids uh, shower curtains with name on it, uh, name bath mats, name wall art, la la la. And then at the bottom, there will be like, check out my kid's shower curtains with personalized name options and a link to my Zazzle store for that collection or that category. The third option is by having a blog about general stuff. I could literally write blog posts about drinking more water or the benefits of doing yoga and on the sidebar, shop now and a link to one of my favorite products and a photo. And I think that people still go for that because that's one of the ways that I was using the previous blog because the articles were actually about different Etsy sellers and on the sidebar was like my penguin socks. There will be a tutorial about this. I filmed my screen, I promise. I feel like only people from a third world country can make a full-time living from Redbubble because the prices there are so much lower. How am I supposed to make a full-time living from them if I live in the US? Let me tackle this. One, you're not supposed to make a full-time living from Redbubble. And I'm not saying it because you can't. I'm saying it because that is a dumb idea. I mean, think about it. If you are hired. If you have a job and you get fired, you need to find a new job. If you find a new job, I'm not talking if it's going to be difficult or if it's going to be really easy, but the minute you find a new job, you're going to get paid, right? But if Redbubble is going to shut you down <laughs> for various reasons, because you don't own your store, even if you do everything right, you can still get shut down. If Redbubble shuts you down, your business is gone. Your job is gone. And if this was like your main source of income, that's insane. It's going to take you months or even years to solidify yourself on other platforms. And this is not how it should be done. And I want to share with you guys one of the people that I haven't spoken about. I did a video about how to make print and demand your full-time living. I will leave a link to that down below. I analyzed three people that I know who actually do print and demand full-time. But putting them aside, because they're already on a video of their own, I remember there was this one girl who came to Bansko. By the way, she's from a non-native English-speaking country. And she was an illustrator. So she had clients that she was doing works for. Uh, she had, I think, a shop on Inprint, a shop on Society6, and a shop on Redbubble. She was cultivating her income sources. She had multiple income sources. And I know so many people who do that. I know a lot of designers who have, you know, some amount of money from Society6, some amount of money from Redbubble, some amount of money from Zazzle, some amount of money from YouTube ads because they have a YouTube channel about graphic design and they even sell their own Procreate brushes. You need to diversify your income sources. If I'm doing YouTube, do you think this is making money? You're watching this right now is making me money. But do you think that this is the only thing I'm doing to make money? There are affiliate links. I make money from different affiliates, not just from here, from blogs. I blog about so many things. I am trying a different YouTube channel. I'm trying to sell notebooks. I'm trying to sell bath curtains. I am trying so many different things. And at the end of the month, while it is true that sometimes one of these slots, one of these methods is going to get you more money at the end of the month, my salary is compiled from all of these things. And yes, I live in a country with a low income. A lot of people in Bulgaria are making 300 or 350 euros a month, which is considered low coming from Israel because in Israel, the minimum wage is, I think, three or four times that. So if I'm looking at that, it's not like I am making my money, my full-time living from what I do online because I live in Bulgaria. I make my full-time living and I can live in the United States or in Australia if I want to because what I did is never trust one thing. Never trust one thing. You have no idea when that thing is going to go away. Like YouTube can shut down my channel and, you know, PayPal can close my account and... I can lose an affiliate connection that I've been working with for a few years because they pissed me off or because I pissed them off. Redbubble can close my store. Etsy can close my store. Never put all your eggs in one basket. How do people make a full-time living from Redbubble when they're living in third world countries? Because they can make $400 a month and that's a lot of money. But they shouldn't rely just on Redbubble and neither should you. Last few questions. Instagram. I post Instagram posts every day for my products, but I get no likes and no one comes into my store. I get this question so much on Instagram DMs from accounts that post the mockups of Redbubble. The mockups of Redbubble are boring. Everybody's using them, everybody's showing them, and a lot of people are using them incorrectly because having a t-shirt that says, rocking it when I'm 40 on a woman who's 25 years old because that's the mockup is just bad marketing. 
Instagram prefer reels. There have been studies showing that people need to upload two, three reels a day to succeed on Instagram. Instagram marketing is something you need to learn on its own. If all your Instagram marketing ideas is to take a mock-up from Redbubble and put it on Instagram as a post, you're doing a bad job. That's not how you should do it. Unless you have the most amazing art in the world that no one has ever seen, then you shouldn't do it. You should invest your time in high quality mock-ups, in reels, and in actually having a marketing strategy. I sell on multiple stores and Instagram only has one link. I tried putting links in posts, but someone said that they can't click on them. They can still copy them. I don't understand what's the problem. One, Instagram has one link, and if you're selling on multiple stores, you should have a links page. There was a tutorial about how to do a links page with Payhip, how to do a links page with WordPress, I think, and you can also just go to something called Linktree, and I will also make another tutorial about using Hostinger Website Builder to have a portfolio website and a links page, hopefully in the beginning of March, and hopefully that will set it up, and that should be the link that you have in your bio. The link in your bio should refer people to your different stores and even to your different collections. Because if you have a thousand designs on Redbubble and someone clicks on the link and wants to find one, good luck to them. Now, referring to what you said, yes, if you put a link in a post on Instagram, no one can click on it. And you're saying people can click on it, but they can still copy paste it. Why would they? Why would someone do that? I mean, you're the person who's trying to sell. You should be the person doing the job. Why would someone go like, oh, uh, this person wants to sell me stuff, so I'm going to go extra? <laughs> no, you're the one who's supposed to bring marketing as an accessible way to them. They shouldn't work for you by copy-pasting, you know, a link. And also, a lot of people think that, you know, that link is not going to work, or if it's not a link, or they don't even see it, especially on mobile when it's not even like remotely an option. It will be so hard to copy that link. So make sure that everything you do, even if you're selling on one place, on one store, make sure you have a links page with like your collections or like your top selling products and stuff like that. And take that link and put it in your link in bio. How do you recover from someone telling you your designs are not good enough for Redbubble? I was reviewed and got really offended. Maybe I should stop print on demand. I don't know you and I get this a lot. I don't know your designs. And if someone thinks your designs are not good, one, maybe they're not good. Two, it's a personal taste. I don't know if you guys seen the video on Kittle channel yesterday it was me and Drew recapping the challenge basically of designing greeting cards and going over like choosing the special winner. And I said something at the end to all of the people who won, who didn't win, who we didn't even show, why do you care what I think? Like, if I don't think that your colors are good, who cares? And I feel like this should be like divided into uh, several things. A design can still be good, but not be in my taste. And a design can also be not good and still sell. If all your designs are not good, and someone says your designs are not good, why are they saying this? Are they saying your designs are not good because they're not placed correctly on a t-shirt? And in that case, you should, you know, place them correctly on a t-shirt. Or are they saying they're not good because you're making designs with grammar mistakes? You don't even go in and change it. You have too many colors. You're putting a black text on a black t-shirt where no one can see it. And you lack any understanding of design. And this is where I'm going to say something that might offend people. And you know what? I'm just going to say it. Print on demand is not for everybody. Making money from graphic design, I'm sorry, from product design is not for everybody. Do you know how many jobs are there in the world? This is not for everybody. And if print on demand is not for you, there are so many ways to make money. And even if you found that print on demand is like half for you, you like it, but you're not making really good designs, but you're good at making Pinterest pins or Instagrams or, or reels, then sell that as a service. You don't have to do print on demand. You don't have to sell on Redbubble. There are so many other things you can do online, really. Also, if someone tells you your work is not good enough and they don't explain why and you don't know them and they're just one person, don't care. Like, seriously, don't care. Next, my Redbubble shop was reviewed by a YouTuber who said, it's weird that I'm selling patterns. I'm really confused. Those are my best selling items. Yes, some YouTubers think that Redbubble is t-shirts. Some YouTubers think that a year ago, print on a man mugs is a new thing. Even though I was selling print on a man mugs five years ago on Etsy. 
And a lot of people don't understand the patterns. And I think it also comes from, you know, lack of understanding because the patterns rule. Like I have pattern in my back right now and I love patterns. I didn't design t-shirts for a long time. I do think that people shouldn't tell you like what to design because I don't think that any platform, especially like platforms like Redbubble, why would they onboard a whole new product if no one wants to buy it? I mean, think about it. Why would a platform upload shower curtains and bed sheets? or pet bowls, or all of these things, if they didn't do their research on what's selling, do you think they're bored? <laughs> so obviously they did their research about what people are searching to buy, especially with a unique print. And if your patterns are selling and a YouTuber told you that they don't understand why you design patterns, well, it's their loss of money. Because if those are selling to you, all cheers to you, I love selling patterns. I really do. I spend every day pinning to Pinterest from my Redbubble store and nothing is changing. Why do you say it's the best platform? I feel like I'm getting this question and it's always the same thing. Someone goes to Redbubble and pin to Pinterest from Redbubble. And when I made the Redbubble Pinterest video, which I think is the second most watched video on this channel, so many people were like, why are you making it so hard? You can just pin from Redbubble. I said it in that video and I'm gonna say it again. Pinterest is a platform that really likes it when your photos are 1000 by 1500 pixels. Those are not the dimensions of Redbubble. And if you pin from Redbubble, you're not pinning the dimensions that Pinterest likes. Also, everybody knows the mock-up of Redbubble. They are boring and they're sometimes incorrect. They don't give a precise feeling. And you know what? I'm gonna stop yapping and I'm gonna show you several pins right next to me on the screen that I made in the last few days for multiple topics, whether it's for my Zazzle store, whether it's for my other YouTube channel. And you can see that these pins look nothing like a Redbubble mock-up because that's what people click on and that's what you should be designing. So if you're just pinning from Redbubble, literally pinning from Redbubble, it's not really gonna do you much good. And I had someone telling me, but why do these companies do it themselves? Because if you go to Redbubble Society 6, you'll see it too. Yeah, they have like a bot that does that. They have an API with Pinterest. They're doing it automatically. They are also a really large profile with a lot of followers, so they don't really care. They're not gonna invest time in promoting your product on Pinterest. If you guys wanna do Pinterest, again, Pinterest tutorial coming up. I feel like half the time is like videos that are coming up, I'm sorry. But uh, moving on to the last question, I've been on Redbubble for over a year, uploading every day and getting no sales. I think maybe it's not a good platform for new sellers. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know either for all of you who send me this. And I always say, I can't really tell you what you're doing wrong without seeing your stores. And then I get a reply back of, okay, thank you. Send me the link to your store if you want me to tell you what I think you're doing wrong. I can't like read your mind what you're working on. So. I don't know what you guys are doing wrong. Maybe you're making a bad design. Maybe you're placing the design on a product in a bad way. Maybe you're not investing enough time in designing or product research, or maybe you're just not doing marketing enough. I don't know. There will be a video again coming up about me reviewing your stores and your marketing and providing marketing advice. And I hope that these videos that I will be talking about, the blogging, the Pinterest, and reviewing your stores with marketing will help all of you who sell on Redbubble, TeePublic, Society6, Zazzle, your own printful, awkward style shops, or anywhere online, even physical stores, by the way. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this little recap or Q&A, whatever, about Redbubble, more tutorials on multiple things, coming up but with that being said that was it for me for today thank you so much for watching as usual i'll see you guys in my next video bye